the parts have come in for that Technics receiver, the one that had the two missing emitter follower resistors. So I went and picked up a couple of new resistors, got the four transistors. We're gonna replace it today and see if we can get this one running. These were a pretty good receiver. I have one very similar, a little bit higher end than this one, but these ones were a fairly good receiver in their day. Let's get the parts installed and get this one working. I'm back on the Technics SA5470 output transistors, drivers, and bias resistors that were missing are here. Let's replace them and get this unit working. was that one and this one the two top ones these other ones were okay as to where the transistors came from I believe the owner Cut them off of uh, eBay. These transistors will have insulation hardware on them. Let's get the original. So let's get let's get a look at the new ones. Make sure that they are the same. I don't know whether these are real or fakes. It could very well be fakes. I mean, they 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 look real, but they're not made out of the same metal. If you look at the original ones, the original ones are shiny. And these other ones are the new ones are dull, so they they may be they may very well, may very well be fakes. But we'll order to remove the other one, this one first, and get some new heatsink compound. Okay, if we look closely at these transistors, this is the original one. This is the replacement. I get a real sneaking suspicion that this is probably a fake, right? It just, it's a completely different type of metal. Certainly not an original, that's for sure. It's not an old stock. Uh, you know, this is most likely, this is a fake. But I guess we'll find out soon enough if it goes kaboom, then it'll be my fault. But I'm... I'm pretty sure this is, not, this is not an original NEC transistor. This is the problem with when you buy anything off eBay. This is one of the reasons I don't buy parts off eBay. I never buy parts off eBay. And this is the reason why. is because, you know, these counterfeiters have done a very good job. These came from China. But you see, the original one's got a dot on here. This one doesn't. But if you look at the lettering, like even the, the font, look at the N and the E. They're not quite the same, right? The font is not quite the same. You know, the N, we look at the N, I mean, we just, oops, if you get a close-up here, I guess that's as close as my camera will focus. But if we look at the font, the font is not quite the same. They got pretty close on the N, but the E definitely, and even the C is, is you know, the, the, the font is not the same. It's a wider here. You know, that's a trademark. So any C wouldn't F that up, right? So... The lettering is different. The A, look at the look at the bridge here on the A is lower than on this one. You see? Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure this is a fake. Message from the owner. I just 
notified him that I think the parts he got were fake. So Albers, we might see some flames. We might see some smoke when this thing's fired up. Who knows what this thing's going to do. Generally fake parts are... Uh, anything can happen, right? We'll find out pretty quick. I'll definitely be firing this thing up through the... Um, through the dim bulb tester, that's for sure. Hopefully it's going to work, but then the, of course the other the other thing is if, if it works, how long is it going to work for? That's the thing, right? A lot of these fake transistors will work until you crank it up and put it under full load and then they go pop. And uh, I'm certainly not going to be putting it under full load I mean, it might be fine, it might be a sub, but no, no, not a sub. It's got the same number on it. It might be a replacement, though. It, it might be a, it might, it might be an NEC. I'm not saying for sure it's a fake, it just, I strongly suspect that it is. Same with the other one. Also, if we look at it, it's, uh, the case is a little higher on on the original one too. I mean, they look to be similar, but it's just there. Again, you know, any the original one's got that black dot on it. This is the original one. You know, the font is just different, right? The font is different. That's the concern. Got a message back from the owner of this. He questioned whether maybe these are just from a different batch of parts. So I kind of said, well, you know, it, it could be. It, it, they could very well be from a different batch. But then again, I saw so many counterfeit parts when I was in the business. Like in the 90s. And anybody, that was, anybody who was in the business professionally repairing equipment will all have the same stories of fake parts that look original and they'll fool pretty much everyone these ones here are actually if they're fakes they're bad fakes because they didn't even get the font right for the E and NEC here's some fakes right here these came from Maine Electronics he swore up a stack of Bibles that they weren't fake um, which I don't even know why I've hung on to these things but uh, these are fakes they look like Sankin I've had these probably 20 odd years to SC 4130 these were used in power supplies in uh, Panasonic VCRs I've probably had these since early 90s I bought a bag of them these used to pop all the time when it's fixing a lot of VCR power supplies Anyway, you put this one in, it looks like an absolute identical to the original. Same marking, sanken, right? Thing starts running hot right away, starts getting hot. Shouldn't be running hot because these didn't even have a heat sink on them. They were just standing in the board. But it starts getting hot. It blows quickly. I was stumped. I think these parts probably came from the shop. I grabbed them and brought them home 
we had we used to buy them by the bag right um, we used to buy like 10 of them at a time I was completely stumped they, they, they were I would put them in and the power supplies were blowing up right away weren't lasting any length of time I took an old machine that the heads were worn out of and I pulled a transistor out of it and I put it in this machine that was under repair and it didn't fail so we ended up tossing these and I think I just brought them home I figured maybe I might be able to use them in something that has was less critical because they're an NPN transistor high speed but these are fakes this is I say going back to the 90s when I was changing these it might even have been late 80s but we were seeing lots and lots of fakes and I say you can't tell the difference if you look at this but this transistor compare it to an original Sankin the trademark looks absolutely identical what we did on one of these transistors was we cut the transistor in half we broke the we broke the uh, uh, epoxy off of it and then took a, a blown one original blown one and cut the epoxy off and the the die that was on the collector is much bigger on the original one that came out of the VCR than on one of these cheap knockoffs and that was the and I took that in and showed it to the owner of the shop at the time because he had never heard of that and um, yeah it was a an issue I was one of the early guys that identified this problem because I was seeing so many of them and horizontal output transistors were just real problematic back in the late 80s into the 90s and say it, the problem has continued so the only only way we were guaranteed that we were getting a part that was not a fake was to buy it right from Sony or right from Panasonic and pay their price then we knew we were getting an original part and that's what we started doing and horizontal output transistor from Panasonic or Sony wholesale cost you know 25 or 30 dollars same transistor from main electronics wholesale cost five bucks it's a no-brainer right when you're quoting a customer on a repair you, you, you buy the cheapest part you can because that's your profit margin you can mark up a five dollar part and sell it for fifteen dollars and triple your your profit you can't do that on a part that costs thirty dollars if you mark it up to forty bucks then people are screaming about the cost of the part so that was but we had to do it we had to get the original parts and and charge and mark them up and charge the the price here's another I'll show you another counterfeit part I've got anybody that serviced Sony televisions or Sony hi-fi VCRs probably recognize this part it even says Sony on it but it didn't come from Sony when these parts were purchased from Sony they were around $85 for this module and we were buying them from main electronics for around nine dollars this of course is the MTS stereo IC SBX 1637A these actually worked but they were counterfeit they were counterfeit parts and they worked for a while the problem with these is that they didn't process the stereo signal properly and they would work but they didn't sound like an original and SAP when someone used the SAP audio for descriptive videos they didn't have the DBX decoding on them so everything sounded compressed and it just sounded awful if you put it if you put an SAP uh, channel on with one of these and you, but you, if you put the original Sony module in from Sony that looked identical had the same part number and everything on it it sounded fine so that's another part that was we discovered was defective so it was written off and well when it was thrown in the garbage it just followed me home I figured if I ever had a TV that I needed a module for I had one of course it's never been used it's been sitting here since well probably 2000 so it's been sitting here for 22 years probably doesn't work now but um, but those are two examples of, of counterfeit parts that you know visually you look at it and it looks it looks original but they're not Come to this one I have the two driver transistors down here that need to be changed I've got replacements for them here 
remove the drivers and replace them one at a time. So the easiest way to locate a transistor when it's not marked is you use a light source, an intense light source, shine on the board and then you look and you just kind of put your finger on and okay there it is right there that's the one and those are the those are the three leads right there that I need to unsolder and that is how I do that if they're not marked on the bottom I just use a light source shine through the board if you can see through it of course that only works on boards you can see through but works for most of them And that helps you identify where parts are real quick visually if, if the board's not marked. Sometimes they silk screen the bottom side of the board as well and that makes things easier. But if it's not silk screened, this is an easy, fast way that you can identify where your parts are so that you can remove them. So once again, this is the 2SB536. Let's take a look at the replacement. So this one here, the labeling looks to be, well, the number is different. The font size of the number is different. But they got the color right. So this might be an original, this one. The number itself, the font is a little different though as you can see, so that's the the suspect there. We'll take a look at the back. See if they look the same on the back. Yeah, the backs look the same. So this one might very well be an original one. More confident that this one's an original than the other ones just because of the, the case is different on them. And these ones here look to be, you know, we look at other subtle things though, like the size of the hole, right, in the, in the transistor itself on the back here. Because sometimes the counterfeiters don't get the size right. And one is bigger than the other with the hole. But they look to be the same. got to do the lights on this too. The uh, fuse bulbs are blown. But the problem is uh, the price of these bloody lights. It's like I didn't buy any. Uh, I'm going to probably put LEDs in here. These bloody lights, a pack of lights is like 19 bucks for a pack of lights. The other one, same thing, same way. I'll identify it by shining a light down here and pointing at it. It's right there. I was looking at the, the codes on here, right? What's that other one have on it for its code? It had L85S. L92S, okay. L9L6Z, so yeah. I mean, these are the date codes. But, I mean, anything can be, anything can be fake. Once again, these are the two originals, and you can see the, the font is certainly smaller on this one. The color of the plastic is also slightly different, right? Different color. These are things you look at, right? These are these are how you can quite often tell: is it real or is it fake? Because even if they're manufactured on different dates, if they came out of the same factory, the materials they use to make the transistors are going to be the same, right? The epoxies and plastics they use are going to be the same. They're going to be the same color. But the concerning thing is the, the font. The font is different, right? The, the, like the D is different. You see it's a, a totally different font 
that they've used and that's what that's the, usually the red flag is that's the counterfeiters quite often just can't quite get the font exactly the same so these could be they might be real but they they could you know I'm betting that they're not real I'm betting that they're that, that they're all fake and it's just I've seen so many of them over the years that uh, as I've said before <laughs> the, the chances of getting a fake are, are much greater especially when they're shipped out of China Especially when you're talking an obsolete part that hasn't been made in 40 or 50 years. If they're real old stock, like they say, well, these are new old stock. Well, if they were authentic new old stock, you would think that the font would be the same because they were made, you know, back in the 70s or 80s. Okay, transistors are replaced. I have to put these two resistors in that were missing, and then uh, we'll power this thing up. We're gonna power it up under the dim bulb tester. So the resistors that are missing are right here, and someone actually just cut them out. These are the emitter follower resistors. I'm gonna pop them out from the bottom and just put the new ones in. If I can do this without burning myself, I think this is, is this one of them here. These are the emitter follower resistors. Oh, really clicked in. That's a good sign. Nothing's popped. Let's hook up some speakers and see if it works. Okay, once again, we'll turn it on. Speakers are turned off at this point. Okay, now we should have sound if I turn on the speakers. I don't hear anything on the right channel. Left channel's working. Switches are dirty too, it sounds like. Where did my sound go? The switches are filthy. I made this my signal might be too weak for FM. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, it's just the it's just the muting. Um, well, you got one channel working for sound. Let's check the speaker fuse on the back and see if it's blown. There's speaker fuses on the back here, and I haven't checked them. One of them is likely cooked. That's good. Let's check the other one. <clears throat> and that one's good too. So why we only have sound on one channel? Speaker fuses are good. 
I guess we'll put the scope on it and see which channel is working and which one's not. So this is the channel I just repaired. We have audio. We have audio on the other channel. Let's just go and clip the scope on to the emitter follower for the other side. And I have sound on the other channel as well, so why am I not getting sound on my speakers? Is my speaker not working? So yeah, there's the other channel there. It's working. Is it, uh, maybe, let me just check to make sure that, that my speaker is actually connected correctly. Wait a minute. Don't! Oh, it's the remote. Ah, stupid me. It's the other one below it. <laughs> okay. I'd be worried there for a minute. Uh, the speaker's A is. I'd be worried there for a minute. What the hell? There we go. It's called opening your eyes and reading, and I had. I had the left speaker here and the right speaker there, and it's actually the left speaker there and the right speaker there. That's the B side. So this piece of crap is working. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're not quite done yet. Yeah, speaker wires. Hear that? Are controls. Controls are bad. I can get this onto full power. Now we're on full power. I guess the first thing now, or the next thing we got to do on this, is we got to clean the controls because the controls all sound like absolute crap. Because this thing's probably been sitting in a barn somewhere for the past 40 years. These receivers actually go for quite a bit of money. You know, this is pr probably sell for 400 bucks. I got one identical, but mine's the bigger brother to this. It's got more power, and I saw one recently that was listed at like 550 bucks. Whether it sold for that or not, but these units are, are quite quite pricey when you when you think about it what, what people are paying for this stuff i know the market is, is 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 not very good right now as far as vintage stereos it's down but it was really high there for a while so we'll clean all these controls I'm using neutral as opposed to deoxit. This is an old vintage neutral that I've got from back in the 80s, which is better than the stuff that they make today. If you're asking me which cleaner I prefer, uh, I like them both equally. Okay, we'll turn it on again. Wait for the relay to kick in. That noise you hear, that whistling you hear, that's a light. That's a, there. One of my lights, one of my cheap Chinese lights off Amazon. You know the the ones that were supposed to be 85 watts, but when I when I put the kilowatt meter on it, they're showing less than 40 watts. But they say they draw 85. They don't. Um, yeah, it it whistles. It whistles on my uh, FM transmitter when it's on. You'll hear it when I switch it on. You'll hear a whistling come on. Almost makes my receiver sound like it's got tinnitus. Because it sounds about the same. <laughs> anyway, it only does it to that transmitter.
uh, tuner it looks like it could be cleared out too so we're gonna clean the tuner how we clean the tuners on these is we use compressed air because you obviously don't want to uh, put any any chemicals or anything on a tuning capacitor so let me go get my compressed air gun we want to set all the plates out so that everything's open and then we're going to just direct some pressurized air into here to blow out any debris, any dust. Now we'll just see how it sounds. See now, now it's not making that the muting on. Yeah, muting's off there, see. There, okay, that's uh, that's functional. Okay, you're gonna do a little hack here. I'm going to put a, this is a 12 volt fuse bulb that was, that burned out. Good thing I didn't buy that $20 pack of bulbs because they're 8 volt rated and these are 12. So you can imagine how long bulbs rated for 8 volts would last on 12 volts. They'd be nice and bright, but they would not last very long, believe me. So uh, I'm going to use a 12 volt, this is a little 3 LED uh, chip setup. I'm going to solder it on to the fuse bulb end and then we can just snap it back in place so I'm just gonna put some solder on here so I can solder a piece of wire to it to hold the LED strip in place there's one piece there and we'll do it the same over here So when I snap this in, I'm just going to put a piece of black tape in behind to prevent anything from touching it anywhere it shouldn't. Now we'll shut out the lights and see how the display looks on this on the front of this receiver. So that looks good to me. Nice even lighting. Let's throw this one back together. I tell you, what is it with the what is it with everyone text messages these days? Like, my wife texts me, and while well, I was working on this, to ask me what I, give me a choice of what was for dinner. I didn't get back to her, so she comes in. And she says, "Did you get my text?" I said, "What text?" She says, "I was asking you what you want for dinner." And it's like, "Hello, I'm ten feet away in the next room. Just don't send me a text. Just come and ask me." Like, geez. It's like my bonehead son, while I was out getting the parts for this, uh, the resistors for this receiver tonight, to make a special trip out to RP Electronics. I'm just on the bridge heading home, and all of a sudden I get an alert that my alarm has gone off at home. Now, I know he was getting off work. So, obviously, he tripped the alarm. So rather than pick up the phone to tell me that it was him that tripped the alarm, he sends me a text. I'm driving. I'm not getting the text until I get home. Was it, is it that much work to pick up the phone and dial and say, hey, I set off the alarm? Um, but no, no, he has, to, he has to send me a text. I don't do text very well. I, if anybody that texts text me knows that it could be hours, maybe even a day before I respond because I don't live with my phone glued to my hand. It's in my pocket. And uh, text messaging is something that I just don't 
I don't respond. It's like people, that's like paging. Yeah, that's that light again. Turn the light out. There's no antenna on this, so that's why it's a bit noisy. Mono. Okay, um, I'm gonna say this one's done. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.